I want to welcome everyone today to this place. My name is Greg Chandler and I'm part of the ministry staff at Southland Christian Church. Bob loved going to Saturday night service at Southland when he was able to. The Bible says in Psalm chapter 34 that the Lord is close to the brokenhearted and he saves those who are crushed in spirit. Is anyone crying for help? God is listening. He's ready to rescue you. If your heart is broken, you'll find God right there. If you're kicked in the gut, he'll help you catch your breath. The Southland Church family sends its love and prayers to you, Emily, and your entire family and friends during this time. I was so moved um, to read about Bob's life in a beautiful narrative that was put together by the family. I read about Bob's mother placing her children up for adoption in hopes that they would have a better life, his brothers and sister. That was her hope for them. Later on, he would uh, run into his brothers. He would discover them again. What an incredible story of reunion. He was well liked in high school, quite the ladies man, as I understand it. After high school, he joined the military and served in both the Army and the Marines, including service in Vietnam. He became a husband and a father and later on would eventually marry Emily and became a stepfather as well. He would be reunited eventually with his mom. Her name was Nell and he was able to grow very fond of her, keeping her picture close by. He and Emily also cared for Bob's brother Gary until his death. By this time, Bob had started his battle with cancer, and this kind of gave him a new perspective on life. He would later return to his hometown of Peoria to kind of retrace his steps, and I admire his courage for making that journey. Just imagine the flood of emotions as he revisited people and places and events that were associated with his past. That took a lot of courage. That experience, though, deepened his desire to know more about the truth, and he would ultimately turn to the greatest source of truth, the Bible, and read it all the way through, which is quite a few. That book, no doubt, affirmed what Bob knew to be true in his heart, that God loves him, God loves all of us. And that book provided for Bob a great peace during his long battle with cancer. What a story. What a story that is. There are a couple of themes as I read that story that just really jumped out at me. Those themes are loss and reunion. Loss and then reunion being separated for a time, but then being joined together again. And I think that beautifully illustrates where we are today. Bob is not here with us as he was before, so there's a loss. And we're separated, but only for a time. There will be another reunion. There are several passages in the Bible that I would like to share with you, and these are most definitely words that Bob would have read on his journey through Scripture. In the New Testament book of John, chapter 14, Jesus said, Don't let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God, and trust also in me. 
There is more than enough room in my father's home. If this were not so, would I have told you that I'm going to go prepare a place for you? When everything is ready, I will come back and get you, so that you will also be with me where I am, and you know the way to where I'm going. In that passage, Jesus gives us three glimpses into what heaven is like. First, he uses the fact that it's a prepared place. He uses the word place twice. He wants us to know that heaven's a real place, and he wants us to be there with him someday. But Jesus also says that heaven is a permanent place. It lasts forever. This earth will not. Our bodies will not. Here, time marches on. But there, there is no time. We're going to be in God's presence forever, and it's never going to get old. So it's a permanent place. But Jesus also says that heaven is a perfect place. I don't know if you noticed driving here today, just through the cemetery, the beauty of the flowering trees. This time of year is spectacular in Kentucky, but is no match for what awaits us in heaven. The beauty of heaven can hardly be imagined. So Jesus knows that we grieve. He says, don't let your hearts be troubled. But he reminds us that there's going to be a reunion again someday. Bob knew a lot about reunions. He's experienced several here, and he's definitely experienced another one in the presence of God. When it comes to going to heaven, heaven isn't a matter of doing enough good things to get there. That's not how it works. None of us will ever live lives so good that God will look at us one day and say, that one's good enough, I think I'll take them doesn't work that way. The people who go to heaven are the ones who realize that they can never earn it. The reason heaven is possible is because of God's love for us. Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. The one who believes in me will live even though they die. And whoever lives by believing in me will never die. And that's the promise of heaven, the promise Jesus gives to us. So it's never easy to say goodbye to someone that we care about. But the hope of heaven is this. It's not goodbye. It's see you later. You know, being in a cemetery causes us to think about a lot of things. Probably the things that matter most in life are relationships with God, relationships with His people. When death finally surrounds us, we don't generally turn to our bank accounts or our possessions, or our businesses. We instead turn to the things that matter most, God, people, family, and friends. Another thing that I'm reminded of whenever I come to a cemetery is the fact that death is not optional. The journey that Bob walked is the journey that we will all make as well. But for those who accept the love of Jesus, the cemetery becomes not the end but a new beginning. H.B. Spafford was a Chicago businessman who came to this country from Europe in the 1800s. And shortly after his arrival, he sent word for his family to join him in the States. So his wife and four small children boarded a ship to make the journey across the Atlantic. But as their ship crossed the ocean, it went down in a storm. And although Mrs. Spafford survived, the four children did not. Shortly after that tragedy, grieving, Mr. Spafford sat down in his study one evening and penned the following words, which we sing today as a treasured hymn. When peace like a river attendeth my way, when sorrows like sea billows roll, whatever my lot, thou hast taught me to say, it is well, it is well with my soul. And Lord, haste the day when the faith shall be sight. The clouds be rolled back as a scroll. The trump shall resound, and the Lord shall descend even so. It is well with my soul. Let's pray together.
Father, as we feel the breeze, as we hear the birds singing, as our eyes have taken in the beauty of spring, it fills us with a longing for what can be. And you're preparing the place that will be for us. We know that there are heavy hearts and mixed emotions in this place today. But thank you for the great hope that even though what's left of our body stays here, our souls return to you, the maker of our souls. When we're there, it is well with our souls. We thank you for Bob's life. We ask you to grant strength and peace in the lives of those that are gathered here today. Father, we look forward to receiving, as Bob has, a new body and a new home, a place with no pain and no tears, all made possible because of the life, the love, the death, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Thank you for that great hope. We pray in his name. Amen.
Ma'am, on behalf of the President of the United States, the United States Army, and the Grateful Nation, please accept this flag as a symbol of our appreciation for your loved one's honorable and faithful service. In accordance to the long-standing military tradition, the volley you just heard was fired to honor your loved one's faithful army in the service of this country and the United States Army. These three rounds shall prove service proof that honors indeed were rendered to the military. For us, they have a special significance. First one was fired for duty, duty to his country, and that's our Second one was fired, uh, fired for honor, and honor his hardships and sacrifice that he endured in the service. The third one was fired for respect, respect we have for all men and women who have the courage to wear the uniform. This time this does conclude the graveside service here at the cemetery and if there's no other request everyone may be dismissed back to your cars thank you <coughs>